On this day in history, Vladimir Putin sent a public message to Joe Biden acknowledging that Joe Biden is the president-elect. Vladimir Putin said in that message, quote, for my part, I am ready for interaction and contacts with you. And on this day in history, Mitch McConnell finally said, quote, I want to congratulate president-elect Joe Biden. And he said that on the Senate floor in the congressional record. And on this day in history, our next guest, former Republican presidential campaign strategist Steve Schmidt, said this to former Democratic presidential campaign strategist David Pluff on their podcast, Battleground. I spent 29 years as a Republican. I've spent two and a half as an independent. And later this afternoon, I will register as a member of the Democratic Party. Wow. And I'm doing that. What a journey. Because in America today, it's only the Democratic Party, which is the oldest political party in the world, that stands for the ideas and ideals of American liberty. It's a broad Big Tent party. I understand ideologically where I come from isn't anywhere close to being, you know, the mean opinion of the party on some issues. But I think for me in this hour, for the balance of my life and my participation in politics, I'm not independent in this fight anymore. Joining us now is Steve Schmidt, former Republican strategist. He's an MSNBC political analyst and co-founder of the Lincoln Project. Uh, and Steve, uh, welcome to the side that is not independent uh, anymore. Uh, this is a uh, this is a very important moment, and I do think historians will note that uh, the person who was doing everything he could to get John McCain elected president some years later turned against that party because of what that party has become. And you could have stayed in the independent status. What made you take that step from independent over to registered Democrat? Well, I, I think, Lawrence, good evening. I think you're overstating it a bit with, with historians looking at my decision, which is a personal one and, and one of a matter of conscience for, for me. Um, look, I've, I've always held this view that the Republican and the Democratic parties are two of the most important institutions, not just in American history, but in world history, for the advancement of human freedom and dignity. And each party has produced the essential leader uh, at America's greatest moments of crises. In the 19th century, that leader was Abraham Lincoln, a Republican. In the 20th century, it was a Democrat. It was Franklin Roosevelt, who saved capitalism, saved democracy, and ultimately, through his wisdom, uh, the world uh, in the fight against Nazism and Japanese militarism. And, and so in this moment, in this fight, um, I look at the Republican Party, and what I see is something that approximates what happened to the Whig Party, though we won't see it play out overnight. In 1856, when the Kansas-Nebraska Act was passed, allowing slavery to spread westward, it broke the Whig Party. It broke it geographically, politically, but most important, morally. And what we saw this past week with 126 members of Congress signing that amicus brief 18 attorney generals, it's important to understand what we saw. That wasn't a legal act. It was a junk lawsuit. It was like something out of a Seinfeld episode that would have been filed in court by Jackie Childs, right? What it, what it was was a political statement. It was a declaration. And it was a declaration of repudiation against the core tenet of American democracy, which is in this land, the people are sovereign and that we pick our leaders. It's also important to understand what we watched in Washington, D.C. on Saturday night. We saw right-wing extremist political violence. We saw fascistic violence in the streets of the nation's capital. Um, we've seen violence in our cities before. We've seen it this summer. We've seen riots where cities have been burned to the ground. But the cause of that rage which does that, as Martin Luther King observed, is from the fury of people who feel that they have nothing taking it out on people that they feel like have something. That's not what this is. This is political violence incited by the, by the president of the United States. And what, what I believe is, to the core of my being, for the rest of my life, we're in a fight now 
between an autocratic sensibility that's taken root in this country in four short years, and the leaders of the country are going to matter, and it's going to matter what party they come out of. The Republican Party, a majority of them voted for this autocratic moment, 90 of them that didn't, but, you know, look, they're in a coalition of conservatives and autocrats, and that's bad for America. The party that's going to defend American liberties, the Democratic Party, and that's why I joined it. I'm a single-issue voter now. I believe in American democracy, full stop. And that's what's going to be on the ballot in every presidential election going forward. And our side can't afford to lose an election because it may be the last one. Uh, Steve, you know, when you're a single issue voter uh, and it's one party, you you end up voting for people uh, for whom you have some policy disagreements of varying sizes. I'm sure that happened to you during your life as a Republican, that you voted for some candidates with whom you had some policy uh, differences. But uh, a single issue voter uh, voting on the Democratic side means uh, you would vote for someone like Joe Manchin, for example, uh, on the uh, kind of moderate side of the Democratic Party, Bernie Sanders on the left side of the Democratic Party. Uh, and, and you don't have any qualms about trying to uh, fine-tune that choice when it comes down to the word Democrat versus Republican on a ballot? Look, I, I think a lot of the issue debates we've been having, Lawrence, that are, they're stale in this country. They've been going on for 40 years, and they haven't changed a lot since the 1980s, and the world has changed dramatically. You know, my politics has has evolved in many ways, and I. but look, I was always a moderate Republican. Um, I gave a speech in favor of gay marriage in, in 2009. Um, you know, I, I'm a New Jersey moderate. Um, but look, at the, at the end of the day, the mature view of politics, and I like to think I have one, is this. It's coalition politics. What I believe in, above all things, is that I want my children to grow up in the world's greatest democratic republic. I want them to grow up in a free country. I want them to grow up in a country where their birthright is preserved. And the vehicle to do that is the Democratic Party. And what that means is that the leaders of that party, by and large, support tax rates are higher than I would like to see. They may support more regulation than I would like to see. If you were to do a, um, a, 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 an ideological survey of the Democratic Party, look, I'm a conservative Democrat, I guess, in the constellation. But again, um, the issue that matters for me is democracy. And what we've seen over the course of November is an American tragedy and a travesty. We saw the deliberate, intentional, premeditated poisoning uh, of American democracy, the poisoning of faith and belief in the legitimacy of the system by the national leaders who are supposed to preserve it and protect it. They're going around saying to the entire world that the United States is a corrupt country, a banana republic that can't hold a free and fair election when we're supposed to be the world's Polaris in doing exactly that. And in the end, when you think about all the inventions that have ever been made in this country, from computers and telephones and iPhones and ships that landed on the moon, vaccines, automobiles, assembly lines, the greatest export this country has ever produced is the peaceful transition of power, the idea of a representative democracy where the people are sovereign. That is the greatest American export. And to see that, to see that great American idea and ideal trampled on by people who have breached their oath to preserve and protect it is just appalling over this month. But we shouldn't underestimate how important this month in November 2020 was. It will define the political fight for the balance of our lives. Steve Schmidt, thank you very much for joining, the, joining us on this very important night in your political journey. We hope to hear from you uh, many more times. Thank you very much, Steve. Really appreciate it.